tell me what's going on with your game. Where are you at? So essentially, um, last year was like the probably the first preseason where I've taken my batting seriously, and I was basically just living at the nets. Like basically every day, I was down there getting you know whispers, wouldn't you? Just getting whispers, just throwing me balls. Um, and then yeah, it just felt really nice going into round one. Made like 40 not out against Wanneroo, then 39 and 30. Um, was like just smoking them like and I'd been chatting a bit to Bowds as well and like he really helped just being more process driven with me batting um, and yeah felt felt good and then went to leavers got glandular fever and then season's cooked season was cooked basically I was just I was sick for like a long time so then I just went back into the twos and I made a 70 but never really like yep. felt the best because I hadn't had many nets and yep. wasn't hitting him that well um, and yeah, I was, I was bowling all right last season as well, and then I got sick, and then it just all basically yeah. just turned to shit. Yeah. Kind of. yeah. And um, yeah, I was in the 19s, and that kind of just cooked me as well a bit. Um, yeah. But this preseason, um, I've been doing a bit more bowling. Um, I started batting later, but I've had a f quite a few hits um, now. Yeah. Um, but I guess I'm become, becoming a bit more aware of like, m like my strengths and working more on my weaknesses. So yep. Like last last year, last preseason, I wasn't really aware of what I was good at, what what I wasn't. So I was just hitting balls. Yeah. And I found out by the end, like I'm very good straight, like driving within the V, um, and um, defending. Um, but scoring off the back foot, particularly like I noticed, like in the games that we had at the end of the season, like for example, Bryce thundering down, bowling short, and we need like like runs. Like I, I just never really backed myself to get forward and or get back and pull for boundary or six or whatever. Yeah. Um, and also the like one thing also I learned is like the dick balls like I find really hard because I kind of retreat a bit whereas yeah. if it's like in my zone I can go bang but if you've got someone like Bryce bowling like in here yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't exactly confident to go bang yeah. so yeah. I basically this season should be getting whispers to throw me like slow ones just near my hip and trying to whip yeah. and just back myself to go straight and also those short ones but I'm still struggling a bit with that, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, cool. where I'm at. Cool, well first thing with that is they're hard. They're like, yeah. not it's balls cool. hip high yeah. are not easy to score off. So that you're not alone in not being able to bone them for six. Um, and physically you're feeling good now? Yeah. Oh, completely over the glandular fever? And yeah, I'm over it. So yeah, I've been running like three, four, five times a week. I've been gymming five times a week. Yeah, so, sweet. Because I've never really had that strength. Like yeah. I'd have to really, <laughs> time the hell out of it just to clear the boundary yeah whereas um this season i've been doing power hitting i've noticed just from going to the gym that i can well you've also grown as well yeah, yeah exactly so yeah. yeah with the levers and everything i can hit the ball in yep. extra five meters or whatever over yeah, yeah cool so you're physically feeling good excellent you're starting to understand your game better what are your goals in the game what do you want to do um well this season i want to bat in the top six yeah i'm um, in a grade which yep. is going to be tough because we've got a pretty good yep. lineup yep um, but yeah, I think I believe 100% that I'm a top six bat yep. in A grade Good. and that I can make runs. I just feel like I just haven't made the runs that I should have at the moment because I don't, um, I haven't like made that hundred to kind of draw back on to think like. This, How old are you? Um, 19. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't kind of got that up my sleeve yet. I've kind of made like a lot of 30s and 40s and yep. but I've never been like someone who's made like consistent seven. And I believe that's the only difference between like me and like someone like. Like like the the like Teague Wileys the Jake Eagles yeah, yeah. like them yep. the nineteens like I back myself for my ability yep. I think I'm, I'm as good a bat as all of them yeah good um I just think that put the runs on the board yeah yeah that's yeah why well that's what runs. the game's about and it, yeah. it like at the end of the day you get judged on the runs you make and that's mm. what determines your career yeah um so you've just got to continue to find a way to bat longer and score more runs and obviously it sounds like the glandular fever just came at an awful time last year and there's never a good time to get injured yeah or be out of the game, never a good time. Yeah. But because you were playing well, you were do like things were working well, yeah. but you're still so young. You're still so young at 19, not many, not many guys have first grade hundreds at 19. Yeah. And you could go and score three this year, and all of a sudden you've got a second 11 game. So you never, remember Vogue saying to me when I was your age, that you're five innings away from playing for Australia. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? And you sort of think about it, you get a big 100 in first grade, maybe another big 100, you play a couple of second 11 games, get runs there, and then you play for WA, get a big hundred. All of a sudden, like a trip, like all of a sudden, you could be in the Australian team if things elsewhere go your way as well. Like, mm. it, it, that's still a very long way away. But you sort of you start scoring runs, and runs is the only currency. Teague's got 
Last year, he was top 10 run scorer. Corey and Cooper are up there as well. Yeah. But if they all bomb this year and you're scoring all the runs, that's the only currency that matters. Yes, they've got that behind their belt. They'll always have that. Yeah. But it's like now is what matters. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so exactly. so you, you've got experience having been through that. You've had the setback and hopefully it's given you some sort of perspective about why you play cricket and how much you love it and those sort of things. So there, there would be some positives out of having it that break and that sort of tough time. Yeah. And now it's just about, yeah, finding a method, not, and method is technique, game plan, and mindset mm. that allows you to score lots and lots and lots of runs. Yeah. But it's also a hunger, yeah. and no one can coach that. No one can teach that. Yeah. That has to come from somewhere in here yeah. where you have an unbelievable hunger that 30s aren't enough. A lot of people who don't have a deep hunger they, they get a good looking 30 and they feel good and they relax and they get out. Whereas I can promise you that's something Teague doesn't do. And technically I think he's got quite a long way to go and I say that to him. Yeah. But he has an unbelievable hunger to bat. That's why he, last year against Rich, uh, Frio and Jai, he got batted for 240 balls. He batted more time last year than any other player. But you can't teach that. I can teach you to have a better technique. Yeah. I can teach you a mental process to bat long periods, but I can't teach you hunger. So you've got to have that hunger and you can sort of develop it, but you've got to find reasons why that, okay, I'm going to like, I'm not satisfied with 30. I'm not satisfied with 45. I'm not satisfied with 78. I'm not satisfied with 110. Marnus got 190 in the shield final. He got out and he punched his bat. Yeah. And I'm not saying you have to have an anger, but he's not, he's not satisfied. That's why he scored 14 first class hundreds in 12 months or something. Cause he's never satisfied that I've done enough. He's got this hunger. Steve Smith's the same. Root at the moment, he's in form. He's got a hunger to just go big and keep going, keep going, keep going. Coley, when he's doing, all well, the best players share. Pekofsky's like that. When he's in, he goes big. And when I asked him as a 19 year old on my podcast, what do you want to do in the game? And I want to get to your long-term goals. Pekofsky said he wants to score 30 test hundreds. That was his answer. That was his answer, clear answer. I want to score 30 test hundreds. And he said, I might not get there, but that's what I'm sh shooting for. And I'm not embarrassed to talk about it because I'm chasing it. Yeah. And I, I say to all my players, like, like I want to get a picture from you. Like, well, what is your dreams? What do you want to do in the game? Yeah, I, like, I picture myself at around like 23, 24, playing for Australia, like as like the primary spinner, um, and also like a six or seven, like like um, later order, like middle to late order bat, who comes in and. Um, like I want to be able to score hundreds. Yeah, good. But like that's just, good. I just want to be able to score hundreds and at the end of the order and just be that all rounder. But why do you have to bat down the order? I don't have to just could bat up the don't order. Don't put limits on it. Yeah, true. But I, I think you should be like shooting as high as you can if that's something that encourages you. Yeah. Because go after like go after it. You're nineteen, you've got a lot of ability, you're playing first grade. I don't really like the word talent. You've got a lot of ability because you've trained to get to where you are. You've done pretty well at first grade level against good players. The next step is playing state cricket, and then the next step is playing for Australia. So you're not that far away if you can just put it all together and keep learning and working hard. Yeah. But I just think don't put limits on it. Why can't you? Jux Callis used to bat four, field it slip, and take lots of wickets. He was scored 11,000 test runs, 300 test wickets, and whatever. Like, why can't you be a, a leggy that bats at four? Or bats at five. No ben Stokes does it as a pace bowler. Yeah. Shakib Al Hussain does it. Like, don't say oh, I want to bat seven. Yeah. Why? Why? Like, you're telling me you're good enough to bat six in and more. And I'd say, I'd be challenging you further. Say, like, you should be hunting if you to be batting the top four. Because if you're good enough, like, don't hide at six. Get up to number three or four and say, let's go. I want to score hundreds. That's where you're going to score hundreds, not at six. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like just how you think about things. Like it's yeah. so important mm. for how far you can go because you've got to believe it and then you can do it. I think like with your point before as well about you saying like T gets a 30 but he's like not satisfied or if he's a 60 or whatever. I think for me last year like I had no idea because the year before like when I played A grade like I was just like my goal was just to play two and yeah, I ended yeah. up playing A grade. And, but like I didn't think I'd even be considered as a bat. And then like I found myself batting five in like the semi facing like Lance mm. and I was like little like fucking 17 year old, you know? Mm. Um, and then like from there, like when I started scoring like 30, I was like, shit, like I can, I can do it. I can kind of do it and it kind of shocked me. And I think 
then I was kind of happy with that when yep. I was on yep. like 30 or 40. Yep. But like, yeah, I think- So like, now yeah. you've got to say, right, if I can get to 30, that's the hardest time batting. Like, and now you've got to start thinking as, one, as if you're one of the best batters in WA. That's what I said to Jay Keegan last year. And he, unfortunately, he didn't have a, a great year, even though he got runs in the twos final. But like, that's my encouragement to you. You've got to think like you're one of the best players and not like, be just like, happy with a 20 or a 30 or a 40 and say, right, I'm going to be one of the best. And if you are or you aren't, time will tell. Mm. But if that's your mindset, you're giving yourself a better chance. Yeah. And you're not satisfied. Like, you're not like, okay, I'm just going to get... Like, again, if you believe that you can get there and, and do it, then you're more likely to. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, yeah. Because it sounds like you've got the ability, it's just getting it right up here and a few maybe tweaks with your technique, improving a few positions so you can score a bit more, but then getting a process and a hunger to go with that. Yeah. But like, I, I'm a believer, whether this is scientifically true or not, I'm a believer that you'll never outdo your belief. Like, if you believe that you're not good enough, you'll never get there. But if you believe you could be good enough, you're a chance and you can, you can go towards it. Yeah. So that's why I'm sort of challenging what you think is possible. Like you can bat in the top four. If you tell me you're as good as Teague, yeah. why not? Yeah. I don't care who else is at Melbourne. Go and own a spot, go and get there. You're a young bloke and, and young blokes always get opportunities if you've got a good sort of attitude, which you do. So go, go and demand a spot by like being so good, yeah? yeah? And like every single player, and this is a story I would use a lot, when Vogsey was um, finishing at Melville, so he was finishing his career, just finished test cricket, he had a space between returning from county cricket in say end of September and playing his final year of Big Bash and he wasn't contracted in first class cricket. So he was training in here a lot with Scotty Millman and I was having the odd hit with him in here as well because I was just doing my thing. And he was at 38 or 39, whatever he was, and he just finished test cricket averaging 60. He's the, got the second best average in test cricket ever. He was still working on things technically. He was still figuring things out and trying to problem solve because no one ever masters the game. Yeah. No one ever masters their mind and no one ever masters their technique because it's hard. But he's, he was closer to mastering it than you or me or anyone because he's very, very good. But the, the moral of the story is you will never master the game. You've got to always be thinking, how can I be a bit better? How can I just continue to manage and maintain where I'm at, but also just get a little bit better? Just get a little bit better. That's like Manus. There's a, there's a great video which I've shared with a lot of players about how he changed his grip after that India series last year. And he got the most runs for Australia in the India series. He was the third best batter in the world at the time in test cricket. And then he, in the Shield final, he said, oh yeah, after that series, I felt like my grip was a bit under, so I went away and I've worked on getting my grip round, and now I'm able to hit back down the ground better. Whereas anyone could sit there and go, you're the third best batter in the world, you don't need to get better. But he's got a mindset of never being satisfied and always looking to get better. And that's what makes him such an amazing player. Yeah. So that's sort of the, like I'm trying to give you a few ideas and thoughts here about if you want to get to there, and be like Pukowski and say, right, I want to play test cricket for Australia for a long period of time and be the number one spinner in all formats. Well, you, that's, the, that's the mindset that the greats have and you have to have that to get there is never be satisfied. You always be hungry to be in the contest and be the match winner and always be looking to get better. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I'm a believer and you could say like you, if you were 25 and you're in Tim David's situation, Tim David's a... a I love what Tim David's doing right at the moment. He wasn't contracted in WA and he, his career was done. He played a bit for the Scorchers, but then he got a big bash contract with Tassie, with um, Hobart. Mm. He then went away and just thought, right, if I'm going to be successful in this game, I'm probably not going to play test cricket, but I can become an amazing T20 player. So he worked so hard at becoming a T20 specialist. He's just been picked up by in the IPL. He was in the 100 final. He's doing all these amazing things now. So that's an option for so many young players is to just go down the T20 path. But I'm a believer, and all, most of the players I work with say, I want to play all formats for Australia. And you're young enough to say, I want to be the leggy and, and bat at five or whatever in all formats. So I'm a believer that if you get your technique and your game based around red ball cricket, and you can handle a moving ball, well, then you can go anywhere. You can play anything. You, if you've got a good fundamental sort of setup and, and game, you can add in all the sexy stuff, all the sexy shots. But if you just become a T20 specialist, you can't come back and handle the moving ball. Mm, yeah. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, yeah. So with my coaching, I'm very harsh in terms of technique. Like if, you're, if there's something not on, you fall over, you slice the ball a bit, I'll tell you because I think that'll hold you back once you get to the highest level. Like with all due respect to Cameron Bancroft, I think he's a fantastic player and mentally he's as good as anyone. But technically he's got all sorts of issues that have held him back. He would have probably been in the test team for the last four years, apart from Sam Gate, if it hadn't have been for his technical issues that he hasn't quite been able to work out. He's still a fantastic player, but if he'd been able to sort of technically be a bit better when he was younger, he'd probably be scoring shitloads of test hundreds. And I'm working with Teague at the moment at getting his technique better so he can get to that, like doesn't have that when he's older. And so technically there's always things you can do better and I'll be always on you sort of saying, oh, falling over a bit because yes, you can get away with it in here. And yes, you might be able to get it away with it on Tompkins on a slow one, but you get on the whacker and you're facing um, Michael Nisa who swings them both ways and you'll get found out. Or you, you somehow get on a trip to England and you face the next Jimmy Anderson who's swinging them both ways at pace and you're like this and you're chopping across the ball, you'll get found out and all of a sudden you're out of the test team. Yeah. So if you've got high ambition, I believe, you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to be robotic. Steve Smith has his own style, but he follows fundamentals where he's balanced and his bat comes straight through the line of the ball. He doesn't slice the ball. So like, I'll be challenging your technique a bit, but I'll also be trying to get in here and making sure that your process and how you think about the game and how you think about the contest allows you to perform at your best. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Because ultimately, ultimately batting is 90% up here. And yeah, you, at the highest level, you will get found out if you've got technical flaws, but you can score lots of runs still. Like Bancroft, who's been an amazing player, still plays first class cricket, still gets lots of 100, because you can sort of overcome that to an extent. Cause, but if you can't get this right, you could have the best technique in the world, but you won't score many runs. Yeah. You might look good for 20 or 30, hit these beautiful shots, be able to handle the best balls, but then you, you lose concentration, you don't have that hunger and you play a silly shot and you're out. And I'd rather take someone who has a really amazing game upstairs and can bat all day and has a flawed technique than someone who has an amazing technique but can't get their shit together upstairs. That person with the worst technique, better mindset will be more successful. But ideally we have a good technique that's transferable between three formats and a great mindset as well. And you look at someone like Dom Sibley, Rory Burns, two again, fantastic players. But because they've got technical kinks and flaws, they find it hard to be T20 specialists, like good T20 players, because they can't expansively score. Mm. Whereas Marnus, who has amazing sort of fundamentals, he can go on to England and get 100 off 50 balls because he's got good tech fundamentals. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So I'll be challenging you, and we'll hit some balls now, but I'll be challenging you on like little technical things. But at the same time, and in season, a lot of the time it'll be maintenance. Okay, you're falling over, let's get your balance right. But then a lot of it'll be like, let's just get in the contest. Let's get your process right. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're training twice a week at Melville or at the Wacker a few times, you'll be getting a lot of contest stuff where you're focusing your mind and probably not much technical stuff. So that's where I'll just be like, like let's keep grooving your technique, trying to make it a little bit better. Even though we're in season, let's just make it a little bit better. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any questions? No. All right, so a lot of talking so far. Yeah. I'll just wang some at you to start. Yeah. Today's about like seeing how you play, seeing how you move, like you say, seeing what you're good at, seeing what you probably need to work on, chatting a bit, getting to know your game, you getting to know how I operate, and then we can start going deeper into things as we progress. Yeah? yeah? Sure. Any questions? No. No such thing as a silly question. So yeah. like I'll often, the way I like to coach, I'll often say what happened there? And over time, regardless if you understand things now, over time you, you'll start to learn. Like most of my players who have spent some time with me They'll say, I fell over, or took a too big of a step, or I pushed at it because I fell over, or I sliced it because it wasn't balanced. Or you'll start to understand things. And if you don't, that's okay. You can only know what you know. Yeah. So I'm not expecting you to have answers now or solutions now, yeah. but as you progress, like the best players are problem solvers. The best batters are problem solvers. So I want you to become a good problem solver. And to be a problem solver, you have to have solutions to problems. And so you have to understand the problem to be able to find a solution. So I'll, I'll be saying, what happened there? And I don't want you to bullshit me. I don't want you to lie to me. If you ever don't know, just say, I don't know. Yeah. There's no like, hurt to the ego. Then we go, okay, cool. Let's talk about it. 
Yeah, so I'll be asking you questions and you've got to ask me questions. And if I say something you say, you don't get it, you've got to say why. And I think you should be able to do that to any coach. A lot of coaches won't like that because it challenges them. Yeah. But I'm more than happy for you to question me. And if you say why, I'm comfortable to tell you why because I won't say anything that I don't know. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's why I don't coach fast bowling or anything. Yeah. But if I say do this or I think you should do that, and you go, why, I don't get it. Like then we'll talk about it. And if I suggest something, everything I say is a suggestion. It's not like you have to do this, yep. but because ultimately it's your decision what you do. You're gonna get coached by me, by f people at Melville, by people at the WACA, all sorts of people in your life. And you've got to be able to work out what you're taking in, who, but also, okay, I've got that from Skulls. I'm gonna try it, yeah, it makes sense. I've got that over there, that, oh, I'm gonna try that, oh, that doesn't work. Oh yeah, that works, I'm gonna try that. Like you've got to become someone who filters things and works it out for you, because everyone's unique. And I'll give you broad ideas and concepts, but then you've got to apply it to yourself. Yeah? All right, let's hit some balls.